Hello. So I might or might not uh, use my uh, slides depending on the answer to this question. And I can't really resist the opportunity to, to ask a question when I have a captive audience like this. <laughs> How many of you have been in a physical bookstore this year? Practically everyone. Wow. The clay people, the clay people didn't make it. Darn it. <laughs> we got to work on them. Put some chips or some motors in them or something. Well, wow, that, that, that's uh, you know, amazing. So my name is Praveen Madan, and uh, you know, I'm an engineer and MBA, and uh, for many, many years, I was working down in Silicon Valley, like thousands of other engineers and MBAs, you know, working away in corporate America and doing pretty well. And then about five years ago, I made a left turn in my career. I decided to focus on bookstores. I saw there was something very powerful going on where every time a bookstore would close, there would be this sigh and moaning from the community. People would chain themselves and give, try to give bookstores money. Please don't go out of business, we need you. You don't see that with any other commercial institution in this country. With banks, you're seeing the exact opposite, the Occupy movement. <laughs> so I, I was really intrigued. What was it about bookstores that people love so much that they're trying to save them and they're trying to you know, make them uh, work and they're, they're trying to make them stick around? So five years ago on a hunch, I you know, left my corporate career and jumped into it. You know, we took over our first bookstore in uh, San Francisco, the Booksmith. And uh, you know, we've been working on it. It's, uh, you know, our sales are growing double digits every year. Our, you know, we are winning awards every year. Uh, and it's doing really well. And now I'm involved with Kepler's. How many of you from the Bay Area? No, oh, mostly all, all people. So hopefully you guys know about Kepler's. Kepler's has been the bookstore of Silicon Valley for about half a century. It's outlasted Sun Microsystems, Webvan, Netscape, <laughs> all these technology companies. They come and go every five or 10 years. Kepler's is still standing. So a few weeks before Christmas, they called me. And uh, Clark Kepler said, uh, I don't think I'm going to make it. And I'm planning to liquidate my business. And do you want to buy my mailing list? And I said, you're out of your mind. Kepler's is like Yosemite National Park. <laughs> you can't close Yosemite National Park. It's a community asset. So, uh, and even I had questions whether, you know, it, it, whether there was a market for it. I mean, this is the heart of Silicon Valley. Uh, practically everyone has an iPad or a Kindle, and you know, people are reading e-books. And there was this larger narrative that uh, with the digital books, we don't need bookstores, and we don't need physical books anymore. Well, my narrative started getting questioned very early on as I got involved with Kepler's. In uh, the middle of December, I was uh, standing there in the bookstore uh, waiting for, uh, to talk to somebody, and I saw this guy walking around. He was wearing a, one of those corporate given uh, you know, jackets, and it said uh, Google Ventures. And I, you know, the networker in me said, hey, somebody from Google Ventures in here, let's talk to this guy. Well, it turned out it was David Drummond. Anyone from Google here? No, nobody from Google. So David Drummond is on the executive team of Google. He's been there for 10 years. He heads the legal corporate development. And, uh, you know, he, and then he tells me he's actually managed Google's e-book program for about two years. So when I realized who I'm talking to, I turned to him and I said, David, what are you doing here? You're the type of guy we would expect is only reading digital books. And here you are in an independent bookstore, and you're buying books. And he's got a basket, and he's packing it full of books. He's got six books in there already, and he's still shopping. And I'm like, what are you doing here? And he didn't even have to think about it. He looked straight at me and said, Praveen, pixels don't do it for me when it comes to books. I still need real books. That's what I'm doing here. I'm shopping for real books. And he said, I live in Los Gatos. There's no good bookstores in Los Gatos, so I come here. And then he pointed to his son, his four-year-old son, who was you know, uh, running around in the children's section at Kepler's and said, and I want my kid to know real books, so I bring him here. So, you know, and then we did surveys. Uh, you know, Kepler's has about 15,000 people on the mailing list. It's a small mailing list, but you know, for a hyper-local business like a bookstore, that's a pretty solid mailing list. You know, in January, we did a survey. And we asked people, well, what do you value about your bookstore? 95% of the people said they'll value coming to Kepler's because uh, they want to be able to come to a place where they can browse and they can discover new ideas. 91% of the people said they value Kepler's for buying books. This is in Silicon Valley. This is in the heart of Silicon Valley. The new Facebook headquarters is one mile from Kepler's. 
you know, the venture capital communities on Sand Hill Road, you know, another two miles, uh, you know, on, on uh, a different side. So in the heart of Silicon Valley, people are telling me they still want a bookstore. They want a bookstore to come to author events. They want a bookstore to meet other, you know, intellectuals. They want a bookstore, you know, to be able to, um, uh, you know, browse and discover, you know, new things. Physical browsing is still three times, there have been studies done on this, physical browsing is still three times more powerful to help you discover new material, new ideas, new books. And think about this, Amazon has been at this for 18 years with their algorithms and physical stores are still ahead in terms of creating a you know, beautiful, well-curated you know, physical display. So uh, let me jump to, uh, you know, forward to you know, uh, just to talk a couple of minutes about DPLA. What would we bookstores like from DPLA? I think first and foremost, we would like to be included. As I'm reading the program, I see a list of institutions mentioned here, and it doesn't mention bookstores. So, so we would like to be included. We would very much like to be part of this new digital future that uh, you know, bookstores are creating. Technology has been the Achilles heel of bookstores and continues to be that way. We have no good technology partners. You know, it's not our booksellers association, you know, who's basically, you know, uh, doing this with, you know, three and a half engineers in New Jersey. It's not Google who just dropped the ball on, you know, working with independent bookstores. We've been looking and looking and looking. We really need good technology partners. And the opportunity that we see as we become, you know, more and more focused on our true mission of literacy and spreading books and spreading literature is that books have only reached about 50% penetration in this country so far. Think about that. Cable television reaches 90 plus percent of the people. Internet reaches 90 plus percent of the people. But 50% of uh, Americans do not read a book after they graduate from high school. This is based on NEA, the National Education Association's uh, uh, you know, studies. So our mission really is to continue spreading books and literature, and we would love to have access to an open source platform through which you know, there's rich metadata, we can build our own applications, we can target our communities, we can build uh, you know, new and interesting revenue models because our communities want us. They want us to stick around. They want us to be relevant. But we really need to you know, play uh, more strategically in the digital world. So that's what we would like to see. Thank you.